Hello everyone, welcome back to my special episode on our chat app. Okay, so this is a special episode because literally we are not continuing with any uh, implementation. Rather, I've done some major adjustments and I've also deployed the app to a live server so that we can explore it. So here is the URL, so chatapp.dev.com. So the plan is that while we build our apps, I'm going to just add subdomains to the dev dot domain and we can just explore it from there. So at some point in time as well, I'll just have a platform where I can showcase all the apps we've built and I hope all of us have that as well so that we can at least showcase our portfolio and people can explore it. Alright, so with that said, let's just delve into what we have so far and I will show the adjustments I've made so based on so from the front end as well on the back end. Alright, so let's get on to it. Alright, so as usual, um we either register an account or we log in. However, if you take a look, we realize that I've removed the social art, so that's because we didn't implement that, and as a result, it's really not needed yet. So it's just okay to remove it so that we won't be trying to click on something that doesn't work and maybe in future we can still go into that because currently i still commented it out so we can still go into that and implement it so the same thing for the forgot password we didn't implement it so I'll just remove it for now so i already have an account so i'll just log in And yeah, this will bring us back to the home page, as we can see. So I've also been able to resolve the favorite ordering. I think from the last episode, we kind of did gimmick. So I've resolved that and I'll show us what I did later on. So, but for now, here is what we have. So John Holmes is just a user. It's not a favorite. I have a testing tester is a favorite, yeah, favorite user. And that's why it's coming up. So now let's add John Holmes to our favorite list. So that's added. And all we have to do is to refresh this. And John Holmes comes up now. Then followed by testing tester. Then we can decide to add Steven too. So let's add Steven. Then now Steven is up. John Holmes follows. Then testing tester. And that's the flow. That's the best idea because we can have so much users i don't know how this app is going to go so it's currently on online so who knows we can have so much user and you prefer to speak with some users so that's the major essence of this and yeah that's for that so the other thing i adjusted was the um viewing of user profile so if i click on this user now we can see this information so initially it was stretching so if you look at the last episode, if you take a look at the close icon here, it was stretching. So I've resolved this as well. So and I'll show us that in a moment. Then I think that's majorly it. Oh, okay, there's something I forgot. I was going to show the um if the user is online or offline at some point. I can still put that in place anytime from now. And also if the user is not online, it will tell us the last time. The user was active. We already implemented something of such on our back end, so it's going to be easy putting that on the front end. And yeah, I think that's all we've done. So aside from this, I've also implemented the mobile mobile view. So if I switch to a mobile view now, we get to have this. So so this is what this mobile version looks like. So you can side you can open the sidebar, view the users you want to chat with, click on them, and you start chatting. So that's what I've done and is currently online. So I'll put this link in the description below for easy access. All right, so let's delve into what I have done on the front end and as well on the back end just to have this in place. So I'll start with the front end. Oh, okay, before we get into that, there is something I would like to show. So let's chat with, uh, for instance, let's say I want to chat with Ben Ige. So hello, Adefemi. How uh, are you doing okay so i'm chatting with ben again now so i'm asking how he's doing 
So I can now log out and log in to Ben again. So let's say Ben. Then we enter Ben's password. So as you, as you can see, we have Adifemi's chat here. And as soon as we click on Adifemi's chat, it's going to update and that will be gone. So that's also what I've done as regards that. And yeah, I think that's literally it as regards what is out there for us to explore and use for what we want to do. So let's go into what I've done on the back end as well as the front end. So we'll start with the back end. All right, so on the back end, I adjusted the uh, flow for our user favorite. So let's start from the model. So initially for our favorite model, it was a foreign key for both the user and the favorite. So after going back and forth as to resolving the sorting issue, I was able to figure out that using the many to many field is actually the appropriate way to handle things like this because the idea is we have a user that has multiple favorite users. So it's so the idea is having the user as the one-to-one -one, uh, field, then its favorite users are now many to many, which we can add or remove to. So that's literally the adjustment we've made on the model side. And I think the other part still remains the same. Okay, so now that's for the uh, model part. So to the views where we are actually getting this uh, sorted out. So I added um, one more one more endpoint. So initially what we implemented on the front end was to update the messages. So when we want to read message, we update it individually. And as such, we kind of make so much request with our backend. So let's say we have 10 unread messages, then we have to make 10 requests just to update those messages. So in order to resolve that, what I've done is to so that, that's actually under the message control. So what I've done is to create a separate endpoint to undo read multiple messages. So that's what the name is, read multiple messages. And from here, I can get the message IDs. So I send the message IDs from the front end. So I just get all the messages that I've not read that I can see at that point, unless we scroll up or and see more messages that we've not read. But the ones I can see at that point, I got the IDs and I send it to the back end, so from what we are, can see here. So message, so I filter the message with the IDs I've sent, and I just read it, and that's literally it. That's simple as it can go. All right, so that's the first part of the message. And yeah, back to the user view. So check his favorite, so that's adjusted. So let's start from the sorting side. So. Yeah, we are getting our user list using the user profile view, which we have here. And the whole get process is handled within the within the get query set here. Alright, so if the method is not get, then we just return the query set. So at that point, that means we are trying to work with if we are posting or getting. So at that point, we don't need to filter out the active user or the logged in user. But aside from that, then we still follow the necessary flow. So I think we should be aware of what we did with the keyword info. So the part we are interested in is the annotate part that I've introduced here. So initially, what we have is just uh, self dot filter, then exclude, then we ordered by the favorite. That's that's actually wrong. So the right thing is to annotate. So we annotated um, a new feed to that query set. And I call this favorite count. So that's just it. And the idea here is just to, if the user, if that particular user is within uh, the active user's favorite list, then just add one count to it and uh, filter and order based on that. That's all we did. And so, yeah, we created a function to handle this. And the reason for that is there are situations where the active user at some point does not even have the user favorite list. So I think another way to implement this is to maybe at the point of you creating the user, you can automatically just create the user favorite um, table. That's left for us, but I will show us what I've done to resolve that. So now I, I used a, a separate function to undo this, and I'm just counting what is returned. So that's, that's what I did. So yeah, on that function, this is how it looks like. 
So yeah, we sent in the user and this is the logged in user. So we could get that from self.request.user. Then we now access the favorite. So user favorite. So if we go back to the model, we will see that we are getting the favorites for the user, the logged in user. Then we are filtering the favorite part, which is the many to many field. So we are filtering to check if it has the uh, the user the user at that point if it if the id is within the favorite list so outer ref is just to get the id or information about the active query set we are on so in so if you take note our active query set is a profile so it's an instance of a profile and we needed the user id from it so that's why i got the user id from it and yeah i also got a value so me getting the value just means the count um query we have here we'll be able to count something and if it doesn't exist then this will become just none and as a result of that it, it counts zero okay so that's the flow and if not we just return an empty array which also the count will count zero okay so that's the flow and if we like you can still do more here that's left for us and with this we are we've been able to get ourselves the sorted list so that's for this part. So the next part is where we actually are updating. So here is the update view. So here is what we use to push or remove our favorites. So again, we got the the serializer. So there is a serializer class to undo the validation for the data we are sending here. And yeah, so we try to get the favorite user. So based on the validated data, we even check. So we are trying to check if the user we are trying to add to our favorite list even exists. So if not, then we just send in the favorite user does not exist. Then the next one is we try to check if the user, the active user, has this particular uh, model. So if it has, we just add, uh, assign it to this uh, variable. And if not, we try to create a new user, a favorite for that user, a favorite table for that user. And we assign it again so and after doing that so we try to filter if the favorite user exists on our favorite list already so the idea is if it exists then that means we want to remove so if favorite then we remove it and if not so take note we are returning here so that means it's not going to get to this point and if not then we add the favorite user so that's what we did for here and that makes the front end work so the next thing is the get here so this part is to check if the user we are currently on chat with is within our favorite list or not and to do that we just put this within a try and cache so favorite equals to this so the OLSS is to ensure that we are able to undo the error we are going to get if the user does not have a favorite table yet and yeah we are checking it so if it exists on our favorite list then we return true if not return false and if the user does not have a thought so that automatically means the user does not exist so we return false and i think that's all the major adjustment i've done on the back end yeah so aside from that i changed the database from sql light to um postgres and all we are all i had to do here was to just include this data compose for the postgres service and on the server I'll just run this and I have a Postgres service and I just have to link the uh, IP to the to the settings. So I'll just show us what I did there. And here, what is, here is what the Docker Compose file looks like. We can always check this out. Okay, so don't mind this. It's, it's just part of it. It's our, it's our project. So yeah, let's explore. So maybe in future I may change it. But as for now, so here is what it looks like. Then on our settings, so that we can see what adjustments we've made to the database. All right, so here is what it looks like. So database name. So I got all this from the environment um, file. So I set all this from inside the environment file, and this is what it looks like. So DB name, DB user, DB password, the host, then the port, and I set this up. And with that, we have the Postgres service up and running. So those are the couple of adjustments I've made to the back end to make everything working. And yeah, back to the front end. Yeah, let's quickly explore things here. So let me clear things out so that we have our screen. 
all right so back to the front end so if we go back into it we yeah all right so the first thing is to how i was able to undo this all right so all i did was to come back to the home page so pub not not public the source then the pages then the home page so all i did was to just bring the profile model for the active user so the issue was that we put we place this profile model inside the chat interface and if you take note the chat interface is just this part of the screen so it made the profile model only show there and not showing on all the screen so as a result it made the content shrink so since the profile model is here that that has been resolved and all we have to do is to just control it from the user list so we have the user list here and since so we have the set uh, rather the visible show profile model here and all we have to do here is to under the chat interface we sent in the show profile model function the set show and that's able to control this from there i think that those part are actually quite straightforward and yeah for the for this part so when you read the message all i have to do is after reading the message just refresh refresh the user list which automatically refreshes this particular page as well i don't think that's a few we want but that can be resolved i think we can't finish a project once like that's the same so you you design it and you keep improving on it so that's that part and yeah so that's that's all we have here and i think we have ourselves a working app that we can actually chat with and we can start making it compete with whatsapp and other chatting app out there <laughs> all right there guys so there we have our app and every code we have here is on our GitHub. So I'll put the links to every content on the description below. Yeah, all right, finally, before I go, I hosted this using Netlify. So hosted it with Netlify, then I pointed the domain using, uh, I did the DNS using um, Cloudflare. So there is a flow for Cloudflare and Netlify to just work with each other and you have everything up and running all right so here is our chat app it's up and running any question let me know any contribution i would appreciate and yeah i think this brings us to like the final final end of our chat app all right so in the next um project we are going to explore i'm looking at creating an e-commerce site so an approach so let's see i want to look at the approach I'm going to use to undo that and based on the um, based on the comments I've gotten on um, the channel I'm going to be using GraphQL and it's going to involve multiple sign-in and I think the e-commerce is a better way of handling this because we can now have an admin that verifies a post before it's shown out there for user to start exploring then we have the normal users themselves to actually do that and yeah i think that works well so with based on that we are going to undo concept like um permissions so to uh, see the permission you can have to do some tasks and yeah also we are going to have out we are going to see how to make use of graphql in django so there's there's a package for that and that's called graphene so i think ahead of the project we can start um, exploring graphene and yeah when we start it becomes easier to follow all right so this brings me to the end of this episode a special one like i said earlier thanks guys for being part of the whole flow and i'll see you in the next project bye